Today, there are a lot of talks, opinions and debates going on all the time. How often do we find power in silence? Marcus Aurelius, a Stoic philosopher and Roman emperor, said that sometimes the strongest response is not words, but the quiet spaces we choose to maintain in the midst of chaos. He said, don't waste time arguing about what a good man should be, be one. In other words, our actions and silences speak louder than our words. But why is silence so powerful? Have you ever regretted something you said in a hurry or out of anger? Imagine how different things could be if you chose silence in those moments. Stoicism doesn't just teach us how to deal with life's problems, it also teaches us how to use them for our own growth and happiness. Think about the times when misunderstandings turn into fights, when gossip spreads and causes trouble, or when unfair criticism hurts deeply. Stoicism's knowledge points us in the direction of a place of peace and strength. Marcus Aurelius thought that a person who lives in harmony with himself also lives in harmony with the universe. This harmony often starts with our choice to be quiet. If you're ready to learn more about how silence can change not only times of conflict, but also your everyday interactions, please leave a comment. Mark your readiness to explore the 10 situations that Marcus Aurelius said were good for thoughtful silence. Let's find out how the stoic art of silence can help us understand each other better. Peace and harmony inside. Number one, when things aren't fair and the maze of problems that come up in life. It is impossible to avoid being treated unfairly, whether you are passed over for a raise or given too much criticism. The sting of injustice can make people feel a lot of different emotions. Marcus Aurelius, a key figure in Stoic thought, shows us a different way to think about things. How powerful silence is. Keep quiet most of the time, or only say what needs to be said. These few words by Alias capture the spirit of Stoic strength. Quiet isn't just not responding, it's a powerful strategy. When we choose quiet, we're not passively accepting unfairness. We're actively defying it philosophically. Silence saves our mental energy and keeps us from the possible worsening that can happen in a heated exchange. Seneca goes into more detail about this idea, pointing out that real power comes from being able to control your feelings. The more we care about things we can't change, the less power we have over them. He says that staying quiet when someone is being unfair is a way to train ourselves to focus on what we can control. Alias and Seneca both call for a reflective pause during times of perceived injustice to help us look at the situation without getting emotional. The silence that comes with this pause lets us think about why other people might be acting the way they are and what might happen if we respond. It gives us a place to think about how to respond that is in line with our core values instead of our immediate urges. It also acts as a mirror for people who do unfair things, reflecting their own actions back at them more clearly than any words could. It forces people who do unfair things to face the hollowness of their actions without giving them the tools of our responses. When we face unfair treatment, choosing silence is not about holding back our voice, but about boosting our dignity. It's a way to protect our inner peace and show our independence. The next time someone treats you unfairly, know that silence can be the best thing you can say. Life is full of unfair things that can't be avoided. Seeing things that don't seem fair can be very annoying and depressing, whether it's in our personal relationships, at work, or in society as a whole. The Stoics, who stressed inner strength and a logical point of view, have timeless advice on how to deal with these problems. By learning about and following Stoic principles, we can stay calm, react in a healthy way, and get stronger when things go wrong. Pay attention to what you can change. Epictetus says that one of the most important ideas in Stoicism is to know the difference between what we can control and what we can't. 
we have power over our actions, thoughts and attitudes, but not over what other people do or what happens in the outside world. When you're treated unfairly, don't focus on what's wrong. Instead, think about what you can do about it. This could mean speaking up for yourself in a cool way, looking for answers, or deciding to let go and move on. Keep up your virtue. Marcus Aurelius stresses that the key to real power is staying good no matter what is going on around you. Being honest and sticking to your values, even when you're mistreated, makes you stronger and more believable. When someone is being unfair to you, fight the urge to get back at them or give up on your values. Instead, show your moral strength by being patient, honest and fair in your answers. Try to understand, not get even. Seneca says that we shouldn't hold grudges or try to get even with others. Instead, we should try to understand why they did what they did. From this point of view, understanding grows and the mental weight of unfairness is lighter. When someone has hurt you, try to see things from their point of view. Even though this doesn't excuse what they did, it does help to calm them down and make it possible for them to respond in a more controlled and helpful way. Accept problems as lessons. The Stoics believe that every problem is a chance to grow. Things that don't go our way test and strengthen our grit, teaching us important lessons about patience, persistence and perspective. Instead of seeing unfairness as just something bad that happens, see it as a chance to get stronger emotionally and learn how to solve problems. Think about what the event taught you and how it can make you better. Grow your own peace. Stoicism says that the final goal is to reach a state of inner peace. It is taught by Marcus Aurelius that outside events should not upset our peace of mind because they can't hurt our inner self unless we let them. Mindfulness and meditation can help you stay calm. Remind yourself often that your peace is not based on what's going on around you. You can deal with unfair situations without losing your balance if you work on being calm inside. Having a stoic attitude helps you deal with unfair situations by keeping you calm and logical even when things around you are going crazy. Focusing on what you can control, staying true to your values, trying to understand, learning from problems and finding inner peace can turn events that might make you feel powerless into chances to grow and take control of your life. Don't forget that how you deal with unfair situations is what really shapes your life and personality. Number 2. When you are being unfairly criticized, not fairly. When used correctly, criticism can help us understand and improve ourselves. But when it's unfair, it can feel like an attack on our character or work, which can break our peace and make us defensive. But don't worry, Stoic philosophy has a powerful alternative, staying calm and silent. How can we use this in real life? Let's look at a historical person who showed this kind of calmness. Think of Nelson Mandela during his long imprisonment. He was harshly and often unjustly criticized by his captors and the government, who saw him as a terrorist and agitator. Despite the intense scrutiny and harsh conditions, MZ kept a respectful silence. He chose to follow the stoic principle that the best revenge is to be unlike the person who hurt you instead of reacting with anger or bitterness. Mandela thought about his beliefs and what he wanted for South Africa in the long run. This shows how the stoic belief in controlling one's response to outside events works. When people were mean to Mandela, he didn't just accept it. He made a smart decision to save his energy for bigger fights. His quiet wasn't a sign of weakness, it was a sign of how strong he was and how committed he was to his cause. Someone once said that how you respond is more important than what happens to you. Mandela's life is a powerful example of this lesson. He turned years of unfair criticism and pain into a platform for peace and change, showing that how we react to injustice can shape our legacy. 
When we think about such strong examples, how might we handle unfair criticism differently? Could stillness and quiet help us face and get through tough situations? You are welcome to share your ideas and stories. If you were unfairly criticized, have you ever found strength in silence? If so, how did that affect the result of the situation? Please share your thoughts in the comments area about how social interactions are changing and how boasting often takes over conversations. Marcus Aurelius lessons give us a peaceful base. They tell us to be quiet when we feel like bragging, and they stress the importance of developing inner virtue over outward virtue. This method from Stoic philosophy is praised because it teaches us a lot about the power of peace. Number 3. The Stoics don't talk when other people are bragging. Marcus Aelius stresses in his meditations how important it is to keep one's own company. Don't waste time arguing about what a good man should be like, be one in the face of danger. Brags. This advice tells us to look inside ourselves instead of comparing ourselves to others or competing with them. When people brag, it's usually because they want to feel good about themselves or aren't sure of their worth. Aurelius tells us to be quiet in these situations, not because he thinks we are better than others, but because he knows that true worth and character are formed in silence and thought. How can we use this in real life? Imagine you are at a networking event where everyone is talking about themselves. By choosing silence, you are following Marcus Aurelius's lead and putting the peace of your own mind above the temporary approval of others. This silence is like a mirror that shows people their own behavior and often helps them become more self-aware than they would be otherwise. Also, Aelius says that a person who lives in harmony with himself lives in harmony with the universe. This harmony starts with control over our reactions, like choosing to stay silent instead of adding to the noise of egos. By staying quiet when someone brags, we protect our self-respect and peace of mind. By doing this, we align ourselves with conservative thought and a way of life that values substance over show. Marcus Aurelius taught us that the deepest strength is often a power that is kept quiet and heard far beyond the loud boasting of braggers. Number 4. Taking care of your own anger. Anger usually comes on quickly and with force in response to being provoked or being frustrated. For example, James, a project manager who was known for losing his temper, was criticized by a co-worker out of the blue during a crucial meeting. Instead of losing his cool, James remembered a quote from Marcus Aurelius that said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Understand this and you'll be strong. Marcus Aurelius, the Stoic Emperor, told people to take a step back from their feelings and look at them with detachment. This principle says that the results of anger are much worse than the causes of it. By following this principle, James was able to control his initial outburst of anger by thinking about what made him angry and whether his reaction would be helpful. Delay is said to be the best way to deal with anger because it means waiting before responding. This can turn anger into a more positive force. This break gives you time to respond based on reason, not on the spur of the moment. When you were angry, did you react right away, or were you able to take a moment to think about what was going on? Imagine using a stoic delay to control your response. How might this change the outcomes in your personal and professional life? This is what we can learn from the teachings of the Stoics. Getting control of our anger doesn't mean hiding it, it means knowing it, keeping our reactions in check and making sure they match our beliefs and logical thinking. Please share your stories and ideas below about how you deal with your anger. What techniques have you found to help you stay calm when things get heated? Let's talk about and learn from each other's smart ways to deal with anger. 
There is no doubt that anger is a strong feeling that can hurt our mental and physical health. Stoicism says that controlling your anger is a key part of finding inner peace and being logical. Stoics thought that even though it's normal to feel angry when we think something is wrong or when we're frustrated, we can control our anger in the end. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius often thought about how important it was to deal with problems with calm and reason instead of anger. We can live a happier and more meaningful life if we understand and control our anger. Figure out what's making you angry. Consider, take a moment to think about what made you angry. Is it a certain person, an event, or a goal that wasn't met? Getting to know triggers. If you know what makes you angry, you can deal with the real problems instead of just responding to the symptoms. Quote from Epictetus, What matters is not what happens to you, but how you react to it. Understand that anger often comes from inside, not from outside. Take a moment to breathe, right away. If you start to feel angry, take a deep breath and count to ten. This easy thing can help you control your impulses. Mindfulness practice. To calm your mind and get back in charge of your feelings, try deep breathing or mindfulness meditation. Stoic technique. The Stoics believed in the inner citadel, which is a mental fortress where you can go to calm down and think before reacting to what's going on around you. Change the way you see things. Change the way you see it. Try to look at the problem from a different angle. Think about how it will affect you in a week, a month or a year. Having empathy and understanding, think about what other people want and what their situation is. What makes us angry isn't always as bad or important as we think it is at first. The Stoic Way Marcus Aurelius said, If something outside of you bothers you, it's not the thing itself that hurts you. It's how you think about it, which you can change at any time. Expressing your anger in a healthy way, communicate clearly. If you need to talk about what's making you angry, do so in a cool and helpful way. Say what you're feeling with I words instead of blaming other people. Look for answers. Instead of dwelling on the problem, try to find an answer. If anger is used in the right way, it can lead to good change. Stoic practice. Seneca said, Delay is the best cure for anger. Spend some time coming up with a logical answer instead of an angry one. Make it a habit to be thankful and positive. Focus. Regularly show thanks to change your focus from what's wrong to what's right in your life. Positive reappraisal. When things are going badly, look for the good things or lessons that can be learned. This could make your anger less intense. Stoic thoughts. Epictetus taught that we should be grateful for our problems because they give us chances to improve ourselves. Not ignoring or stifling our feelings is not the way to deal with anger. Instead, we need to understand and change them. We can change anger from a destructive force into a tool for personal growth by noticing what makes us angry taking time to think, changing how we see things, expressing our feelings in a healthy way, and making gratitude a habit. Adopting these stoic principles helps us stay calm and handle life's problems with kindness and understanding. Number five, when people don't understand, they keep quiet. Misunderstandings happen a lot in human interactions, and they often lead to fights that could have been avoided. The Stoic response, which was pushed by Marcus Aurelius, says that the best thing to do in these situations is to be quiet. But why does silence work, and how can it be used in real life? Think about Mahatma Gandhi during the Indian Freedom Movement. He was misunderstood by both the British government and his own people. Gandhi believed in peaceful defiance, and one way he did that was by staying silent in the face of harsh criticism and widespread misunderstanding. His silence wasn't passive. It was a powerful way to show how strong and steadfast his beliefs were. 
Marcus Aurelius said, Be kind to others, but strict with yourself. This quote encapsulates the Stoic ideal of silence in misunderstandings, tolerance for other people's mistakes, and personal integrity. By choosing not to respond to every misunderstanding or wrong assumption, we give ourselves time to think and not make things worse on the spot. Epictetus gives us a useful point of view. If someone doesn't understand your theory, don't explain it. Live it. Being true to our principle through cool and collected silence can often say more than trying to correct every wrong view. It shows that you are sure of your beliefs and strong enough to handle pressure from outside sources. If someone doesn't say anything when they don't understand, they can let the argument settle without adding to it with insults or defensive remarks. Many misunderstandings clear up on their own as people think about them over time. Taking this method can turn potentially dangerous situations into chances for mutual respect and understanding by embracing silence. Stoics teach us that sometimes the best thing to do is nothing at all. By avoiding addressing every misunderstanding directly, we can find deeper insights and more important solutions before moving on to Lesson 6. I'd like to thank you for coming with me to this stop. Your presence here shows how determined you are to put the lessons of Stoic philosophy into practice and become better. Now, let's move on to the next five lessons in this journey through the changing world of human interactions, where insults and harsh words are sometimes thrown like storms. The Stoic teachings of Marcus Aurelius hold us steady during these storms, encouraging us to stay cool and collected, this stoic way of dealing with insults not only protects our honor, but also builds our inner strength and gives us a deep wisdom. Number 6. Navigating the Storm of Insults Insults can make people angry or upset right away, which can lead to bigger problems or long-lasting anger. Stoicism, on the other hand, can help. Marcus Aurelius famously wrote, The best revenge is to be unlike him who hurt you. This suggests that the best way to deal with insults is not with anger, but with rising above it all and keeping your cool. For example, Cato the Younger was a Stoic who often faced ridicule and insults in the Roman Senate, even though he was being provoked in very harsh ways. Kay's reaction was incredibly Stoic. He kept quiet and collected, showing that personal virtue was the most important thing to him. Whether it was his ability to handle comments without getting angry or revenge made me think of how strong and resilient people can be. When someone insults us, it's important to keep quiet. First, it keeps things from getting worse. Second, it gives us time to think about what the insult was really about and choose a reaction that fits our values instead of our instincts. Seneca added to this idea by saying that the best way to avoid being annoyed by a fool is to forget them. He said that when we ignore an insult, it loses its power to bother us. When we deal with insults with respect and silence, we can turn potentially bad situations into chances to grow and think. It teaches us that other people's words don't define our worth. Our own actions and decisions do. When we accept this Stoic lesson, we find that the quietest response is often the most powerful. How are you going to handle the next round of insults? Are you going to let them upset you, or are you going to use them to make your tough resistance stronger? In the rough seas of everyday life, insults can feel like sudden waves that wipe out our confidence and make us feel very strongly. Whether they come from a stranger, a friend, or even a family member, Comments can make us feel bad about ourselves and upset our peace of mind. But what if we could handle these storms like a sailor who has been through many of them before? What if we could use stoic ideas to get through the storm without getting hurt and come out stronger? Stoic thought has a lot to say about how to deal with insults in a gracious and strong way. We can rise above the chaos and keep our inner peace by focusing on what we can change, our actions and attitudes. 
Change the way you think about the insult stoic principle. What bothers people are not the events themselves, but how they think about them. From Epictetus. When someone insults you, it's important to remember that the words don't have any power on their own. What makes those words matter to us is how we understand them and how much we value them. Application. Try to rethink the insult so that it doesn't hurt as much. For example, think about the chance that the person who insulted you might be putting their own fears or anger onto you. Practice not caring stoic idea. If you are pained by any external thing, it is not this thing that disturbs you, but your own judgment about it. Alexander the Great Stoicism teaches us to become indifferent to things and people outside of ourselves, focused instead on our own good qualities and reactions. Application Know that an insult is only your opinion and choose not to care about it. You get back your power and keep your cool by doing this. Work on improving yourself. The best way to get back at someone is to not be like them, says the Stoics. Alexander the Great Instead of getting back at the person who insulted you or focusing on it, use it as a chance to grow and think about yourself. No matter what other people think, try to become a better version of yourself. Use. Look at the insult as feedback, even if it was said badly. Take some time to think about whether it's true and whether it shows you where you need to improve. Grow your compassion. The Stoic Way Whenever someone has done wrong by you, immediately consider what notion of good or evil they have, for when you see that, you will feel compassion rather than astonishment or rage. Alexander the Great Understanding that people act based on how they see things and the problems they are having inside can help you understand them better and lessen the impact of what they say. Application be kind when someone insults you. Recognize that the person who insulted you may be having problems of their own and try to understand them instead of getting angry. Build up your emotional strength. You have power over your mind, not over outside events, says the Stoics. Know this and you will be strong. Alexander the Great to become emotionally resilient, you have to train your mind to stay cool and collected when bad things happen, even insults. Application To build a strong mind, practice being aware and thinking about things. Remind yourself often that you are in charge of how you respond and that other people's opinions do not determine your worth. Adopting these stoic tactics will help you handle insults with calm and grace. Remember that what makes an attack powerful is not the words themselves, but how we respond to them. You can keep your inner peace and keep going on your way with unwavering confidence if you reframe things, practice indifference, work on improving yourself, grow compassion, and make your emotional strength stronger. Number 7. How to deal with loss Loss is something that everyone goes through and it can have a big effect on them at some point. Stoic philosophy, especially the lessons of Marcus Aurelius, can help you deal with and get through loss with grace and strength. Marcus Aurelius said, You have power over your mind, not over outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This way of looking at things is very important when dealing with loss because it reminds us that even though we can't change what we lose, we can change how we react to it. But how can we use this teaching in real life when we are grieving and losing someone? Admiral James Stockdale used stoic principles while he was in prison for a long time during the Vietnam War. Even though he had lost so much, like his freedom and his normal life, Stockdale found strength in the stoic idea that his ultimate freedom lay in his ability to choose how to react to his situation. This situation supports the stoic idea that how we deal with loss shapes our character more than the loss itself. Why is this stoic way of dealing with loss so powerful? 
because it lets us see loss not just as an end, but as a part of a bigger story of personal growth and resilience. Seneca Another Stoic philosopher says, Let us prepare our minds as if we were coming to the very end of life. Let us put off nothing. Let us balance life's books every day. The point is not to make the pain of loss go away, but to use it as a reason to think about our lives and make changes. How have you dealt with loss in the past, and how has it changed how you approach new challenges? Please share your stories and thoughts about how you've changed how you think about and deal with loss in the comments section. Your thoughts could help someone else who is also going through loss. With a stoic mindset, we learn to value what we have even though we know we will lose it. This doesn't mean giving up. It means being involved in life and realizing that every loss teaches us something useful about our strengths, our goals, and our ability to get better. Number 8. When there is a lot of confusion in the world, people often make mistakes or feel bad about not reacting right away. Marcus Aurelius, a staunch supporter of Stoicism, wrote that it is better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. This saying shows how important it is to be quiet, especially when you don't know what to do next. An example of this principle can be seen in crisis management situations where leaders often have to make decisions with only partial information. In the early hours of a natural disaster, one important event, a government official chose not to make any premature statements by waiting for accurate data to be confirmed. By doing this, the official avoided unnecessary panic and kept the public's trust. This stoic practice is not a passive acceptance of not knowing what to do. It is a deliberate pause that makes sure our actions and words are based on careful thought, rather than the fog of confusion. Silence protects us from the mistakes of jumping to conclusions too quickly. It gives more accurate information time to come to light, letting people make choices that are both well-informed and thoughtful. This is a lesson that can be seen in nature, where the stillness of a lake shows depth rather than empty. Think about the last time you were in a position you didn't know what would happen. How might your answer have been different if you had taken a moment to think and then acted? Accepting silence is not a sign of passivity. It's a choice to be stable over hurried, making sure that our word and actions are based on genuine thought and care. This stern practice not only stops mistakes from happening, but it also builds a patient and strong mind. Being quiet when you're not sure what to say. In our fast-paced world, silence can be awkward, especially when we don't know what will happen next. We are trained to want answers and solutions right away, but Stoicism tells us that it's better to be quiet when we don't understand something. In these situations, silence is not a sign of passivity or ignorance. Instead, it's a way to practice patience, thought, and strength. By letting ourselves be quiet, we give ourselves time to think, gain insight, and make better choices. In these times of quiet doubt, let us look at how stoic ideas can help us find peace and strength. Being alone in silence can help you think. Silence is an important place for reflection because it lets us work through our feelings and thoughts. We can think more deeply about our situation when we don't have quick answers. This can help us understand it better and make better decisions. Stoic Insight Marcus Aurelius talked a lot about how important it was to go inside and find peace. By accepting silence, we can make a mental retreat that helps us see things more clearly. How to develop patience? Explain. Uncertainty can make people irritable and anxious, but being able to accept silence helps us develop patience, which is a key stoic trait. It tells us to wait for the right time to act or come to a decision instead of rushing into them. Stoic thought. Epictetus said we should concentrate on what we can manage and let go of what we can't. 
being patient helps us deal with unknown without getting too stressed out. Getting rid of stress and anxiety. In times of uncertainty, the need to move or find solutions right away can be too much to handle. Accepting silence can help us feel less stressed because it takes our attention off of the need to solve problems right away and puts it on being more present in the present moment. As Seneca said, we suffer more in our imaginations than in reality. We can calm our thoughts and be less likely to worry or overthink about what might happen if we practice silence. Improving your listening skills it's been said that silence helps us listen better, both to other people and to our own inner selves. This better listening can help people understand each other better and respond with more empathy, both inside and outside the relationship. Stoic insight. Active listening and getting to know someone well before responding are important parts of Stoicism. We can use this practice to also listen to our thoughts and feelings when things aren't going as planned. How to find peace in the present Explain. Silence can help us stay in the present and find peace in the middle of chaos and uncertainty. We don't have to worry about what will happen in the future. Instead, we can focus on the present, which is under our direct control. Stoic Insight The Stoics believed that people should live in harmony with nature and be content with the present moment as it is. By embracing silence, we align ourselves with this idea and find peace in the present rather than worrying about what might happen in the future. Accepting silence when you don't know what to say is a deep practice that fits with Stoic ideas. It makes you think, be patient, feel less anxious, listen better, and be more present. We can handle uncertainty with more peace and strength if we welcome the quiet times of life. In the stillness, we can find knowledge and clarity. Number 9. The Art of Silence for Stoics During False Rumors When there are a lot of false rumors going around, keeping quiet is not only a defensive strategy, but also a smart one. Marcus Aurelius said that you can always choose not to have an opinion, so there's no reason to get upset or worried about things you can't change. This stoic wisdom is very helpful when dealing with the distortions that rumors can cause. For example, Alexander Hamilton, one of the founders of the United States and the first Secretary of the Treasury, was often involved in political scandals and personal rumors, but he often chose to publicly deny them. He might have been able to save energy and keep his honor by being stoic and choosing silence. He could have focused on his important accomplishments instead of public arguments. Why is silence so powerful in these situations? It acts as a wall, stopping the spread of lies and easing their emotional toll. By not responding, we show controlled thoughtful restraint, showing that not every provocation needs our response. This kind of response can disarm those spreading rumors and shift the conversation, the narrative more effectively than confrontation. How might adopting this stoic silence change how you respond to false rumors? Could it change the outcome of these stressful situations if you choose silence when faced with rumors? Stoics teach us that how we respond to false information can either make it stronger or weaker. By choosing to remain silent, we are in line with a philosophy that values peace and honesty. How do you feel about keeping quiet as a way to fight false rumors? Have you ever found it to work? Have. Number 10. Putting idle talk aside. It's best to leave other people's mistakes alone. Marcus Aurelius' timeless words remember us to focus on our own lives instead of getting caught up in idle gossip. This stoic principle tells us to save our energy for meaningful pursuits instead of wasting it on unimportant things. Take the case of modern workplaces, where gossip can often take over talks. Aurelius said that a stoic should focus on the tasks at hand instead of engaging in such idle talk. This not only helps keep things professional, 
but it also sets an example for others by ignoring idle talk. The Stoic sets a good example by showing that honesty and concentration are more important than idle chatter. Dear my friend, gossiping may seem harmless, but it can hurt trust and make things more heated. Also, it can keep us from focusing on our goals and cause us to misunderstand or make assumptions about other people's intentions or character. Putting aside pointless chatter fits with another Stoic belief. Judgments, not events, are what bother people. By choosing not to judge or spread rumors, we stay true to our core values and create a peaceful and respectful space. Ignoring idle talk isn't just a way to avoid pointless conversation. It's a way to affirm our commitment to living a life with purpose and dignity. This stoic discipline helps us build character and keep our cool. Pay attention to making sure that our words and deeds make our surroundings better. Marcus Aurelius listed ten times when silence is golden. We've looked at a deep stoic wisdom. Silence isn't just the lack of words. It's a profound strategy for inner peace and harmony. Aurelius said, Nowhere can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul. Let this wisdom guide us not only in times of trouble, but every day. I encourage you to accept these teachings, apply the art of silence in your life, and find the peace that comes with a more contemplative, stoic way of living. Accept silence and find peace. If these lessons have touched your heart and inspired you, Please don't forget to like and comment. Every share is a great source of support for us. Also, don't forget to share this value with your friends and family. If you're new, please subscribe to our channel to get more deep lessons on Stoicism to help you grow. See you in the next lessons.